This video is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Hey brother! Guys, I cannot tell you how much fun I'm having diving deeper and deeper into the world of Avatar. And today I'm excited we are talking about one of my favorite characters, Ty Lee. You know, the charming, bubbly, prep school valley girl who joined the circus and keeps talking about auras and is best friends with the enemy. <laughs> we all have that friend. Right? Actually, even if you somehow do, Ty Lee is still one of a kind because she's actually seven of a kind? At one point in the show, she reveals she actually has six identical sisters, which I have to say is a real testament to her parents. I mean, I personally have three kids, two of which are indeed identical twins, and I gotta tell you, it's hard. I'm not sleeping much, gang. Seven identical, though, is downright impressive and almost unbelievable because it has actually literally never happened on Earth before. There are cases of septuplets in the world, but never seven identical. So way to beat the odds, Ty Lee and family. I, I applaud you. But what is crazy is that being one of seven identical septuplets is not even the most impressive thing about her lineage. The most impressive thing is that she is totally an air nomad. What? Guys, before we dive on in, I need to give a huge thanks to today's sponsor, ExpressVPN. Now, if you're watching this video from around the world, you might be thinking, man, I sure do love me some Avatar, and I know it's available on Netflix in the US, but it's not in my country. Well, boy, oh boy, do I have good news for you. See, Netflix uses this thing called geo-blocking to make sure certain content can only be seen in certain parts of the world. But with ExpressVPN, you can actually change your digital location to pretty much anywhere in the United States, and then you can watch all of the stuff we have access to here, including all three seasons of Aang and Company. Avatar The Last Aang Bender, no? Avatar The Last Airbender. But either way, just normally working from home these days, I'm pretty much running Express on all my devices anyway, just for that little extra layer of protection. In case you don't know, what a VPN really does is it takes all of your data and then it encrypts it so that hackers and stuff can't get it. Think of it like you're sending a postcard to your Aunt Teresa, thanking her for all those delicious cookies. The mailman or anyone in close proximity might just look over and read that postcard and be like, whoa, Aunt Teresa and makes really good cookies, Whew, I need to pretend to be Jay so that I can get those cookies. Oh no, now you've been hacked and you're not gonna get cookies. But if you are using a VPN, it's kind of like you're mailing a box of postcard dust to your Aunt Teresa. A box of postcard dust that doesn't magically reform back into its original state until it is safely in her hands. At which point she can then bake and send you a box of powdered cookies that are magically reform into regular delicious cookies when they get to your door. Although I gotta tell you, cookie powder itself, that feels like a million dollar idea. Maybe we should do that, I don't know. So guys, make sure you protect all of your fresh baked cookies by heading to the link in the description down below, expressvpn.com slash SCB, and find out how you can get three months free today. Again, that is expressvpn.com slash SCB. Link is in the description down below. Okay, Ben, so one of the things that has never really made sense to me about the history of the Hundred Year War in Avatar is the complete and utter success of the Fire Nation's attack against the Air Nomads. I mean, the show is called The Last Airbender. The whole premise is built around the fact that the Fire Nation wipes out every other single member of the Air Nation. And yes, it does have to mean all of them, because unlike the other three nations, every single air nomad could airbend. But like, there are just so many hurdles they would have to overcome in order to accomplish this. As we talked about last week, just getting up the mountains to where they lived would be a challenge. Plus, then you'd have to contend with the monks themselves. Never mind the fact that the Air Nation isn't like one single piece of land. They are spread out all over the world in the North, South, East, and West Air Temples. Meaning you would need at least four 100% successful coordinated assaults on the Air Temples if you're gonna get all of them. Surely there was like some Yoda out there who crawled through the ductwork in one of these temples and made it to the Dagobah system, right? Into exile I must go. Why? Why? But okay, 
Odds against them, whatever, I can still get on board with it. Well, not, not on board with actually attacking them, just on board with the idea that they were successful. Doing it was quite awful. But Sozin's Comet did give their whole army like plus 100 to firepower. I think last week I said plus 10 to firepower. Sozin's Comet has appeared in the air and that gives like all the firebenders like plus 10 to firepower. Might have been underselling it a bit though. It's more like plus 100 to the firepower. But no, the thing I really take issue with concerning the Fire Nation's success is that the air nomads were nomadic. A nomad is one who wanders, one who doesn't have a permanent resting place, one who is just out in the world. My personal headcanon is that they all had Sky Bison hindquarter stickers that say, not all who wander are lost. Anyway, my point is, even if most of the air nomads were at the temples when the Fire Nation attacked, certainly some weren't. I mean, as kids, they are all given a Sky Bison as an animal companion. And if Aang, who's only 12, is any example to go off of, they pretty immediately start traveling just everywhere. Can you imagine giving your 12 year old a flying animal and being like, have fun? My mom wasn't even comfortable letting me drive the minivan when I was 16. I mean, if I'm being honest, she's, she's still not cool with it. But seriously, as Aang is traveling to the North Pole, we learn he's already visited Kyoshi Island, Omashu, he has friends in the Fire Nation, he knows what penguin sledding is. Will you go penguin sledding with me? Uh, sure. I mean, it's not hard to understand what it is, but you have to know that you can do it, and it's like a water tribe only thing, so he must have been there. There's just no way the Fire Nation got all of them because there's no way all of them were there. And you'd think once they got the heads up that they were being hunted by the Fire Nation army, they're definitely gonna make it a lot harder to find them. Certainly someone evaded them, right? Well, yes. It turns out the answer to this very question and problem was finally resolved in one of the Avatar comics, Relics. Relics takes place during book one and features Aang being captured by Admiral Zhao, who fills a cave with air nomad relics to lure him into a trap. And once he has captured Aang, he reveals that Fire Lord Sozin used caves exactly like this to lure in and trap air nomads who had survived the initial attack. Basically, the air nomads would find these caves think they were the caves of other survivors and go in, at which point they would become trapped and then executed. It's like, really, really mean trick. But effective, to the point where by the time he dies, Sozin at least believes the only airbender he didn't get was the Avatar. I wasted the remainder of my life searching in vain. But personally, I disagree, and I think the proof is Ty Lee. Okay, so per the name of the show, when Aang wakes up out of the iceberg, there can be no doubt that he is indeed the only airbender left alive. But that does not mean that zero air nomads survived Sozin's purge. Like say for example, if even one air nomad, and the odds of that seem pretty high, was in Ba Sing Se when the Fire Nation attacked. Well, guess what? I have news for you. 100 years later, Ba Sing Se has resisted invasion. Actually, still in me, I'm not even sure what I'm talking about. There is no war in Ba Sing Se. There's no war in Ba Sing Se. Point being, it would be a great place to hide as long as you never leave, which already seems to be the custom in Ba Sing Se during the war anyway. Let's say you are such an air nomad and you're stuck in Ba Sing Se and you settle down with some non-bending Earth Nation citizen and three to four generations later, the air bending is no longer present, but there would still be a descendant alive from the air nation. And I don't really want to get into how like bending and genetics all work work together and stuff because that could probably be its own entire video, but obviously something like that would have to have happened because we know Aang is the only airbender left during the time of the show. And you might be sitting at home like, uh, Jay, okay, that might be a pretty good example for an air nomad who is in Ba Sing Se, but Tai Lee is from the Fire Nation. I mean, she went to the Royal Fire Academy for girls. Certainly if any air nomad survived, it wasn't in the Fire Nation. 
right? Don't you worry, we will get to that. But first, let's address why I even think this is a possibility and examine how very similar Tai Lee is to the Air Nomads. And on top of that, how she stands out so much against her Fire Nation cohorts. First is her overall appearance, which normally I wouldn't put too much stock into, but there are some things here that just really stand out. Take her hair, for example. Now, I don't wanna to get too technical here, but it's brown. Which might not seem like a huge deal, except every other person in the Fire Nation has black hair. It's not a huge difference, and it doesn't have to point to anything, but it could point to her ancestors marrying outside of the Fire Nation. As could her eyes. Almost everyone in the Fire Nation has copper, yellow, or reddish eyes, but not Tai Lee. Her eyes are gray, the same as, wait for it, Aang's. You know Aang, right? The last airbender, probably you've heard of him. And speaking of Aang, the two of them happen to share some extremely similar facial structure. Like, take this picture of Tai Lee. You just take off the eyelashes, take off the hair, add the arrow, and boom, it's Aang. Actually, fun fact, this is a picture of Aang to begin with. But the point is, if you were fooled for even a second, Enough said. Although actually don't go anywhere. I do have I do have more to say. It's not just her looks. Like take for example the circumstances under which we meet Tai Lee where she is a member of the circus. Which like not for nothing, but the circus is a nomadic lifestyle. And yes, I know, choosing a nomadic lifestyle isn't like genetic or anything, but it does kind of feel like a little hint from the writers, doesn't it? Tai Lee is also significantly more spiritual than any other member of the Fire Nation that we meet. But even with all of that attention, your aura is this dingy, pasty, gray. Well, okay, to be fair, Iroh, but he's kind of an exception to a lot of Fire Nation rules himself. But what I'm trying to get at is that spirituality of almost any kind is just not really part of daily life in the Fire Nation. So like then from whom is she even learning all of this chakra or chi blocking stuff from then? Because I got to tell you, it doesn't seem like the kind of thing they would be teaching at the Royal Fire Academy for girls. No, I think the answer is that it pretty much has to be being taught to her from her family, which of course they would know because such information would be passed down from her air nomad ancestors. Unlike the present day Fire Nation, the air nomads of the past were extremely spiritual, like way more so than any of the other three nations. But that still leaves us with the problem of how could her ancestors have survived living in the Fire Nation at all? And I think the answer lies and where she went to school. You know, the Royal Fire Academy for Girls. Consider Tai Lee's two best friends, May and Azula. May's father is the governor of a city, and Azula is literally the heir to the throne of the entire Fire Nation. Like, whatever school these girls went to is absolutely for the elite of the Fire Nation. That suggests that Tai Lee's parents or her ancestors probably shared pretty similar status, which might have helped them avoid avoid suspicion of harboring Air Nation refugees. Like, if you're Sozin, probably the last group of people you are expecting to harbor Air Nation refugees are the high-ranking officials in your army who are hunting down those exact people. So, based on her appearance, her general light-footedness, and her knowledge of things that other people in the Fire Nation just seem to be unaware of, my guess is that her ancestors managed to not be at one of the air temples when the Fire Nation attacked, and were then offered refuge by some high-ranking military officer in the Fire Nation, with whom they then started a family with and eventually produced Tai Lee and her six sisters. Fun fact about the sisters, Ty Lee hates being part of a match set, which is why she tries to like differentiate herself, but then she ends the show joining the Kyoshi Warriors, who all dress the same anyway, but they can take the costumes off. So she's like sort of both. Isn't that cool? But guys, what do you think? Is Ty Lee indeed an air nomad? Let me know your thoughts in the towel section down below. Thanks so much as always for watching today's video. Please remember to leave a like on it if you haven't already and subscribe so you don't miss any future Avatar content from us. If you want to see why the Fire Nation killed off all the dragons, you can check out this video right here. But Ben, until next time, I will see you in another life, brother.